Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jasmine at the Eternal Circle. Um, I just got through with my event um, over on uh, Facebook. It went very, very well and I had a lot of fun and I enjoyed myself. I even got to open up my new deck that I got yesterday just to kind of get a feel for it. And oh my goodness, I'm going to have so much fun with it. Um, the energy on it is just is so nice. It's so nice. Um, and the pictures on it are just so beautiful. Um, I look forward to connecting with it even more so uh, later on. Um, so today I'm just going to talk a little bit about how I can do uh, my tarot and how I can do my past life paintings um, for those who are curious. So... Um, Sometimes during during our lives, like we're a little bit busy um, with work, our children, our family, what have you, that we just don't have time to sit down and be one on one with someone, getting a reading done. Okay, and that's fine. You don't have to sit down one on one with me. You don't. You just need to send me a picture of you. Okay, just your face, just your face, nice smile, you know, and send it to me. Okay. Um, yeah, book me the appointment first. Okay. And then send me the picture. All right. And, um, what I can do from there is I can read you. Okay. So I connect through your picture by using your eyes and eyes. I will say this and it's the easiest and, and truest saying I have come across is the eyes are the windows to the soul. Okay, so it is the easiest way for me to read someone is through a photograph, all right? Especially if that person is very kind of like shielded or very protective of themselves. I might even ask for a photo then, right, when I'm reading for someone. Um, so we can do it that way, okay? Because things get busy, things get chaotic, and but you still want that reading, right? Um, and so what I can do is I can either do a video or I can type it up. Okay, typing it up is a little bit easier for me to do if I'm going to be doing that route, only because of the fact that I do have three little children, okay? So it's easier for me to type it up and send it to you. I will take a picture of the cards that I have picked out for you, so that way you can see it, all right? And um, put it on with your write-up and send it to you um, via email, okay? Um, so make sure that you do have an email or somewhere where I can send your reading to, all right? Um, secondly, I'm going to talk about how I do past life work and how I do spirit guide work. Um, once again, photo related, okay? I'm not gonna sit down with you and, and do past life painting and spirit guide painting because it takes a lot of time. Okay, so it's not like I can paint a picture in an hour and be done. Uh, that's not how it's how it works. Okay, I can maybe sketch it out within an hour, and then maybe just maybe I I don't even know if I can sketch it out within an hour. It depends on how much detail needs to be in there. Okay, um, but a painting usually takes me about two to maybe four or five days to do entirely. Okay, so. I need to make sure that I have the right colors because past lives and spirit guides can be picky about colors. Um, I need to make sure that I have all the information in there because I get shown what symbologies and what kind of things I need in that photo to make it what it needs to be, right? And there's no point in me painting a background that has no sense to the picture, right? If that's not what they're showing me. Um, so I'm going to use one as a reference and I've gotten consent from my client to use it. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, um, you will see me use this a lot, okay? Um, it's one of my newest ones that I've done for a client, okay? All right, so how I did the process was basically I sketched it out and then I took some notes and then I started painting. Well, let me tell you, very picky, okay? It wasn't like, oh, let's uh, let's just put some color on that. No, it had to be shaded correctly. It had to be, it, the hair had to be correct. The, the wolf had to look 
like a real wolf. Like the the color on the bush had to be that that color. Like uh, the the symbol in the cave, there had to be that symbol in the cave. You know, there had to be that water. You know, all these things, all these tiny details had to be in there, right? Because that's what they told me to put in there. Okay, that's what I've been shown. So, okay, get me? When I'm doing a past life or when I'm doing a spirit guide painting, that is what they're showing me to do. Okay, so for instance, with this one, the symbology in this one is the new moon or the full moon in this one. I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's a full moon, full moon in this one. The wolf, okay, the rune symbol in the cave, um, the meeting in the cave, and then we have the water as well. And these are all symbols, okay? Symbols that I have had to come up and write it out and process it into a write-up. So a uh, write-up can be about anywhere between a page and a half, two pages, depending how detailed it is, right? Um, even for this one, like, she's wearing yellow, okay, and she's wearing a plaid skirt in the cave. Well, for me, okay, seeing this automatically when I saw her, I felt connected to Scotland, okay? Um, because just seeing her and seeing seeing the environment and then seeing the plaid skirt, plaid skirt was a dead giveaway. Uh, the yellow, though, I was like, why is she wearing a yellow cloak? I don't understand the yellow cloak. Okay, so then I had to kind of search the time period as to, okay, where is this yellow cloak fitting in? Okay, because usually we didn't do the cloak thing. There was usually the the plaid um, overthrow to be part of the cloak, right? Um, not the yellow. Well, the yellow is the, is the color of, a, of the Jacobite. Um, so we're looking at anywhere between late 1600s to early 1700s, putting that timepiece in there, right? So that that in itself is another key piece of information that I'm passing on to my client um, in this photo, right? It's the same with uh, painting in her breath, right? To show that it's it's cold. It's cold there in nighttime during the fall. That's why the change of colors in the trees right it's not just all green it's not just you know it's just there's red there's orange there's brown there's these colors that are in there to make it fall right so this is the season that she's showing me because this is the last season that she had was fall right the water that was being shown was the last thing that she saw before she she died okay so that's why that was added in there. So all these little pieces, all these details are thrown together into this painting to make it what it is. And each painting is individual to each person. Everybody has a different past life. No one has the exact same past life. It's like no one has the exact same life as I do right now. We might have some similarities in what we do. We might have some similarities in speech or dress or what have you, right? But we, we're we not the same. We're still individual, right? Um, as for spirit guides, sometimes people can have the same spirit guide. I'm not going to lie. Some people can have the same spirit guide. And the reason with this is I will, I will kind of put it to you in this way. Um, if you think about it, spirit guides are kind of like caseworkers, okay? Um, they take on a variety of people, right? And it might be so happen that I might have this particular spirit guide, but then so does this other person. We share the same spirit guide, but they might have different information for me versus the information that they have for you, okay? So their job for me might be different than their job for you, okay? This is another thing to keep in mind, right? So their message for me might be different for the message for you, right? Because once again, you and me are individuals. We are on separate pathways. So during the spirit guide painting, I will paint your spirit guide. 
And then I will do a write up about the message that they want to send to you. Okay. And usually they'll end up putting in symbology as well, just like the past life painting, whether it be a symbol, an actual symbol, uh, an animal, a flower, a rock, um, anything that really strikes strikes out in that painting, right? Um, so it's it's very very meticulous. It's very detailed um, work that I do in these paintings, and and it's not like oh no, I just decided to paint this. No, this is this is me seeing this. Okay, so this is what I do. Okay. Um, no, no lies there. No lies there. Mm -mm. I've been doing past lives since I was 14. Um, so I decided to do past lives because I had a very vivid, vivid dreams of certain past lives that I had. Um, and it wasn't until my mom explained them a little bit more clearer to me that I decided to do a little bit more information on my own. So I, that's when I started to do painting, uh, painting my own past lives, um, started to do more research on my own past lives and becoming more familiar with them. Right. Um, and then I started to branch out with my friends and starting to figure out their past lives and their connections and so on and so forth. So I've been doing past life work since I was 14. Okay. Tarot reading. I've been reading cards since I was 12. Okay. So I've been doing this stuff for about 18, 20 years now. And, um, you know, en energy work and all that is, is nothing new to me. Um, I'm used to doing all kinds of different things. I'm, I'm used to trying out different things. I'm used to being shown how to do th certain things like shown, like not like, Oh, here's a book. You know, no, no, I get, I get shown things like information, like from spirit in, into my mind. Like that's how it goes for me. Um, I don't particularly delve into astrology. That's, that's not my, my, my suit. Uh, so if astrology is what you're seeking, sorry, dears, I don't do astrology or I just don't do it yet. We'll see what my life path holds. Okay. Um, I do do some healing work here and there. Uh, obviously I actually do healing work while I'm reading, um, which you won't notice while I'm reading for you because that's just how I do it. I just kind of slip it in there while I'm reading. So while I'm reading, I'm kind of doing my healing work for you um, because everybody can use a little bit of love and care, you know, just how it is. Um, even if, if that doesn't seem like you need it, it's there. And I think that's all I have to say about what I do, really. Um, I have been an intuitive since I was a small child. Um, I It's... I think it's hereditary in my family. Um, I got it from my mom who got it from her dad and her mom. So she got a double dose and, uh, and I've passed it along to my children. So we'll see what happens there. So far it's been very fun. Um, my house has been, um, very interesting with all the different uh, energies and vibrations. Um, so I've kind of got it balanced out now where it's where it's kind of chill. <laughs> it took me a while. It took me a while to kind of like, okay, we, we need to, to kind of do this and do that over there. And okay, all right, we're good. Um, but uh, for the most part, uh, yeah, it's hereditary. It's It's generational, I think. And uh, it should be interesting to see if my children pass it on to their children um, for certain. And um, as far as I know, um, there is a, a druid connection through my mom's side of the family, which could explain quite a lot as to why um, I am the way I am and why she was the way she was. And uh, it explains quite a lot about us. So anyways... Um, Without rambling on too much, that is who I am and that is what I do. And if you want to check out any more of my stuff, please, in the description, you can click on my links and send me a message. All right. Ciao.